a British Latino Network production. Welcome back to another episode of the British Latino Network podcast. Today, I'm very happy to have Andrea Martinez with us today. Um, it's a great pleasure to be able to talk to her. Andrea is very much doing a lot in her in her chosen field. You know, she works. She's working towards her her goal of becoming an, an actress. Uh, I guess more mainstream, even though right now she is an actress anyway, working in the UK. Um, and she also is a, one of a host on on a podcast as well called Latin Heat um, UK as well. So it's a great pleasure to have Andrea with us today. She's kindly agreed to come on. And she will also be part of the Hispanic Heritage Month series as well. Andrea, thank you for coming on. How are you? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really good. Just, you know, rainy day today in London, but staying positive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no, no, that's definitely, yeah, it's good. To, it's good to have you on and it's uh, good to hear that you're good as well. Um, Andrea, so... You know, let's get straight into it. Um, tell us about yourself a bit. So, obviously, I know, um, you mm-hmm. know what you what you're up to. But for the listeners, tell us what you're up to generally. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, like you said, my name's Andrea Martinez. I'm 25. I'm originally from Venezuela, Caracas, and I lived there until I was 10, and then I moved there to London um, with my mom. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so at the moment I do acting, I do a bit of modelling, makeup as well, and also a radio host for, like you mentioned, um, for Latin Heat, which is um, it's a radio show every Sunday. It's on seven to nine pm, and yeah, it's mainly focused on like everything Latino. You know, like the whole our whole objective and goal with it was to really give Latinos a platform because. You know, in the UK, we're, I don't feel like we're represented that much. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the whole idea came to give us a platform and just put us on the map, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what would you say that it's fair to to maybe assess that your your primary goal, aside from doing modelling and the, the, the hosting on the radio, that your primary goal is um, acting? Yeah, definitely. My primary goal is acting. Um, Acting is something I always wanted to do since I was little, since I was in Venezuela. But when I moved to the UK, it was a bit tricky because I didn't speak the language. So for me, I kind of forgot about acting for a while because the language barrier and the culture change and stuff. So I just totally forgot about it. And then I didn't start pursuing it until I was 18. Right. That's when I really went for it and like I changed my A levels I was studying to um performing arts and then after that I followed on to a full time acting school right. for one year. And then yeah, ever since I've just been doing like different classes and I got my first agent um back in twenty sixteen. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I've just been working since on like different commercials, different films. Yeah, my latest film is called Trust. So mm-hmm. It's out on Amazon Prime and YouTube at the moment, and I'm gonna we're gonna be filming part two for that next week. So mm. really excited well, for that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good. That sounds really, really interesting. So, how did your inspiration? I guess where, where did the inspiration come from for you to? Because you said you wanted to do acting since you could remember pretty much. Yeah. What would you say inspired you to to pursue acting? Why was it acting and not and nothing else? Um. Well, to be honest, like as a kid, it's just always what I wanted to do. There was like this film, I don't know if you know it, yeah. called Anastasia. It was like a cartoon film. Yeah. And I always like, since I was little, I would always just like pretend I'm her and just really do my acting. Yeah. But then, yeah, like I mentioned, when I came here, I forgot about it. And it wasn't until I had a conversation with um, like a family friend who's, his name is Jeff Thompson and mm-hmm. he's a, he's a writer and he, he wrote one of the films that I've, I've been in mm-hmm. and it wasn't until I had the conversation where I remember I was going through like a lot emotionally for, throughout that time like I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and I was a bit frustrated with that and I felt really bad about myself because I was like I should know what I want to do in life etc and then it just it just came to that it just came to like well you know isn't there and he asked me isn't there anything like creative that you'd want to do um and stuff and that's when I remembered acting and he just gave me that sort of like push to just go for it 
yeah. to really go for it and you know he promised me he's like oh you know if you do it and you take it seriously I'll write a film for you and then obviously he did do that because I did go and take it seriously it kind of gave me that sort of motivation to push me to do it yeah. And then that film was accepted in like so many festivals and then I ended up winning an award for it. Wow. So it, yeah, it all happened really smooth in that sense with that project. Okay, cool. So um, it's been, well, how would you, how would you describe like the, the journey so far? So from, from you, you know, sort of deciding to take up acting again, you know, in your, when you were about 18 so, or so. Mm -hmm. What would you say the journey has been so far in your in your acting career? Um, do you know what? There's been a lot of ups and downs for sure. Yeah. Especially um, because me personally, I can be a bit of like a control freak, and it's like I want things to go the way I want or when I want. And the thing with acting is like, there's no formula to it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, you, I've no actors that, for example, they've never done any training yet they're in like big um like netflix films for example then you've got people who've gone to like the big drama schools like rada and then they didn't end up doing anything so mm -hmm. i feel like there's no specific formula um on how to make it but i feel um it's just important to network and make your own work because if you're not getting any auditions um like you can't just rely on your agent you have to like make your own short films really try to get yourself out there and um yeah there's it has been tricky. I mean, my first agent, who was actually, um, they were really good. And I got them when I finished my one year acting school. Mm -hmm. They um, they dropped me when I was pregnant with my son. Right. So that was a big thing because you're not really allowed to do that and stuff. And then they kind of did it over the phone. And for example, that was a moment where I, can, I could have given up then, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they dropped me and they were just like, oh, you know, there's no point representing you if you're pregnant. And I was just a bit like, well, I'm 21, you know, it's not like I'm going to have a baby and just give up my acting career. Yeah. But to them, they kind of thought that. And that was really hard because I was just like, OK, um, you know, I have to find a new acting agent now. And then there also came a point after just before I won um, my award in my film Shadow yeah. just before that I did even consider quitting because I was just a bit like okay well I'm a mum now like I need to provide for my son this is not going as fast as, as I'd want it to but then literally like a week after that I was thinking like that I won the award and that was like for me like reassuring like do you know what um, I must be good at this so I need to continue yeah. and yeah now I'm in a place where I'm happy with what I'm doing um, I'm happy with the film projects that are happening, you know, filming the second part to Trust and also um, the radio show. So I definitely say just like it's important to just keep going and believe in it because it's so easy to feel like um, you should give up or like, oh, maybe it's not for me sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. OK, yeah, I can see how that would have been quite tough, you know, to to sort of be dropped by by an agent because of that. But do you feel like yeah. that, maybe that is more of a representation of what the industry is like? Where, for example, you know, what do you feel like their 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 mindset was for for dropping you just because you were pregnant? I'm not sure because it's like I've spoken to people about it, and I know people that they've been pregnant and their agent kept them because. <clears throat> excuse me because you can find um work when you're pregnant you know there's a lot of pregnant commercials pregnant photo shoots mm -hmm. so there is a market for that anyway yeah. um i don't know it was just really random to be honest and it was done over the phone so it yeah. wasn't even for email yeah. So the way they've done it, it's a way where I couldn't, you know, track it down and be like, you know, <laughs> you're not supposed to do this and stuff. But I don't know, maybe they weren't, you know, they weren't happy with me. Um, maybe I wasn't booking them as many jobs or whatever. And they maybe they used that as an excuse. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you're not meant to do that. And I know a lot of um, people that they've stayed with the agent whilst pregnant. So I guess it maybe came from that. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, how have you found the the sort of roles that you've been getting so um obviously you're you're, you're a latina in the uk um do you feel like how the, how how do you feel that has influenced like the roles you're getting um do you feel like you're getting like a specific type of role do you feel like it limits the types of roles that are available or do you feel like now yeah. nowadays in the uk maybe they're starting to get more open to 
to you know Latinos mm. and Latinas in in the in the acting acting industry? Well, I think um, naturally, as a Latina, you know, we they always think, oh yeah, let's get a Latina, and we're quite like sexualized, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, so it's okay. always the same, the same sort of roles. So they're not really, or they're good roles, but they're not really. Um, that deep um, emotionally, for example, mm-hmm. and with me, I like when I'm playing a character. I do want it to be like a, like a kind of like a complex character. Like there's more depth to them, so I can really get into it. Mm-hmm. So I find myself sometimes I get roles where it's just quite basic. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do it, and I do it, and it's just quite easy and straightforward. Where, um, for example, in my film Shadow, which is it's on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. That was really, it was different. It wasn't your typical, yeah, Latina role. I had to, you know, like do the whole film, like no makeup at all and really get into like complex emotions. Mm -hmm. So that for me is like what a really class is like proper acting. So, yeah, but I don't know. I feel like the UK has a long way to go, especially in like independent films. It's getting much better. But in terms of TV... Yeah. It's still quite bad because I've had two experiences where I've gone up for a Latino role, right. for example, and I haven't booked the job. And then, you know, I've obviously looked to see, OK, you know, who got the role? Like, let me see what other Latinas is about. Um, I've, I think I've just lost you, Andrea. And on these Latina actress, they ended up booking um, Asian girls. OK. So right. that for me... I was so annoyed because I was like, we're such a minority already. There's yeah. not enough um, acting work for Latinas anyway. And then the time that there is roles for us, they've given it to a different ethnicity. I found that like so unfair. When that happened, I was just a bit like, you mm. know, I definitely want to move, um, not move completely, but I definitely want to do acting in like Spain or in LA because I feel like it, we will get there in the UK with Latinas on TV but I feel like not yet and we still got a long way to go probably like another 10 years or so yeah wow okay yeah uh, that's actually quite interesting how they decided to, to yeah <laughs> I couldn't believe it I was like really <laughs> yeah. wow there you go um so what was what was the what was did they give you any feedback or something at the end? And was it just a case? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing with acting. Like, you never you never get feedback. You go, you do your audition, that's it. Yeah. You don't know why. Like, if they didn't pick you, you'll never know why. Yeah. Sort of thing. Okay, okay. Well, but I mean, from, from like, doing some research into your acting profile, you've definitely been in, in, in a lot of, you know, projects. So... You know, mm-hmm. so do you, do you feel like you're getting casted for more diverse roles now? So not necessarily just you being a Latina, but more more diverse roles now. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, especially, especially. Well, in the film that I'm working on now, trust it, the casting was never a Latina. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. It was yeah. So it was nice because it wasn't that sort of stereotype. Um, so I get to play just like like the ethnicity is that like ambiguous for example right, so it's right. like I can do more things and um I've done adverts recently as well where it's like I've done a Lego advert recently yeah, I saw it, yeah. and they weren't yeah and they, they weren't looking for a Latina either yeah. you know they were just looking um it was like any other ethnicity or something just like not um English for example yeah. so yeah it's nice I feel like I can I can play different things as well than just Latina so yeah. it is good to That's do that cool. That's cool. Yeah, no, I saw the Lego advert. It was um, it was really good. It sort of looked. It reminded me of like um, you know, like the Fast and Furious trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of people said that to me. They're like, oh, Fast and Furious next. I was like, oh, God willing. <laughs> yeah. well, I, really I love that advert. Yeah. So how? So what is the experience like? So for someone, for example, who you know, from in, in, like for example, myself, I have no idea what the acting industry is like. What a a day of shooting consists of so for, for our listeners who you know would be interested in that what is like a typical day let's say you've got a day of shooting what how is what's a typical day like oh okay <laughs> well it is a very long day so yeah. um normally so they'll you know they'll book your transport so say you'll get you know you'll get your cab at um six in the morning then you get there for like seven thirty and you know they'll start your makeup by eight 
finish your hair um, by like 11, then most of the time you have like a lot of hours to wait. So your hair maker will be ready mm-hmm. by like midday, for example, but you won't be shooting till like 3 p.m. or 4 sometimes. So you do have mm-hmm. a lot of time to just wait around. Yeah. Then then you get um, called to set and then you do a lot of takes. So for like the smaller scenes, you do, you know, probably like 20, 30 takes because mm-hmm. they're taking... Um, the camera goes in different angles. So you'll get one from an angle in front, one from the side, a lot of different angles. So I think anyone that's interested and really wants to take it serious, just know, um, yeah, just be prepared for like really long days. I, me personally, I love being on set. So I love it like the long days, everything. Mm-hmm. I just love it. But yeah, it takes a lot of effort and patience and you have to maintain your energy as well. Because if you have energy, you know, from midday and your scene's not till the evening, you have mm. to find a way to kind of like bring that back so you can deliver um, the best that you can for camera. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how, how do you do that? How do you keep, you know, come on, what do you call it? Like on, like, how do you, how do you keep like on point, like for, throughout the whole day? So <laughs> that when, you, when you've got the, the shooting later on in the day that, like, you know, you're 100% on it. How do you do that? Do you know what? I think with that, personally, I think my acting training did help because we used to have so many long days in acting school like we would start at for example um 8 30 in the morning we had to start Mm -hmm. and we didn't finish till 6 30 in the evening and that was monday till friday and we had like so many plays to do so many things we had to do at the same time that you kind of just got used to like preserving um that energy i feel like when i'm on set it's like you get taught this in drama school, you can bring your energy, for example, your vocal energy, you can get it from your diaphragm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, <laughs> going really technical into yeah. it. So I think you kind of, just, when you're in that moment to just get your energy, you can just, you know, physically like just shake yourself about a little bit and just like visualize it and get yourself mentally in that moment, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, your energy. Or, or you can just have a coffee, you know? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, but you don't want to. Some, sometimes when you have a too strong a coffee, you can be a bit jittery when you're a bit shaky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you start portraying a shaky character or something. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, definitely. If you're gonna do that, you have to be like a um, coffee drinker. So it's normal. If you're yeah. not a coffee drinker, don't do that because you'll be you get anxiety and you'll be shaking all over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I mean, you also mentioned that you would be open to, or perhaps you've been looking at sort of taking your acting industry or sort of taking roles outside the UK. So, for example, in Spain and you said LA as mm-hmm. well. So yeah. one of the reasons from what you said it sort of was like, because I'm guessing, I guess, or from sort of what I'm assuming is because maybe the roles you're finding here in the UK are quite more limited. Um, are there other reasons, for, for, for example, for you wanting to, to pursue other roles outside the UK? Um, no, do you know what? It literally comes down to that. It's it's, it's just so limited. Mm-hmm. Like in films and adverts, I found to book roles, but in terms of um, TV and film, it's very hard. Even with my old agent, I remember I was always doing self tapes for um, America. So it was always American Latino roles because they have so much. And for example, when you watch american films or netflix series most of the time you see at least one or two latinos yeah when you watch tv in the uk you will never see a latino like you never see a latino in eastenders for example yeah yeah so it's (laughs) it's actually very limited and yes i've just always wanted to go to la because obviously hollywood um, is in la and there's a much bigger market for Latinos over there. Like, it's much more competitive, obviously, but at least, you know, there's more auditions. Mm -hmm. And in Spain, I've actually, do you know what? It's actually good news. I've literally just signed with a commercial agency in Spain. So hopefully I'll be going. Yeah, it happened just like two days ago. So I'm going to be hopefully going back and forth to get me some work. Okay, that's good. Well, congratulations on that. And... Sounds sounds really yeah, exciting. Absolutely. So how how do you go about like so you were saying that you do a lot of self tapes and how do you go about doing your like booking your projects? Is that for your agent or is that sort of more an independent stuff that independent thing that the actress has to do herself? 
Um, it depends. So if you're starting out and you don't have an agent yet, you can still find work. So there's sites like Mandy.com. I use that a lot. Mandy.com is really, really good. Um, things like Backstage, I think even IMDb, you can do on your own without having an agent. But at the moment, I do both. So some work I find even for networking or for Instagram, people would contact me. But my agent, um, you know, he finds me work for like Spotlight. That's what agents work on. And, you know, he would just send me an email and be like, yeah, we, we have this self-tape request. Um, can you get this done by tomorrow or in a few days? And then he'll just send me the script. I'll read over it and then do a self-tape send to him and that's that. But, yes, yeah, so I do a bit of both. I get work from my agent and also try to find work um, for myself as well. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, that sounds sounds good. So, and then what would you say is the, the long-term the long term goal for you like what if you could sort of say okay here in 10 years this is what I'd like to where I'd like to see myself what would it be for you oh wow <laughs> that's a big question in 10 years well maybe you should make it five um, let's say five in 10 years I'll be 35 so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like wow I want to make it definitely before then okay in five years okay before I'm 30 I would like to de definitely be like a really established actress in the UK, like just like a bigger actress. Also, I want my um, radio show to get really big as well, mm -hmm. especially because of the course for it, you know, it's for us Latinos. So I just really wanted to get big to give us Latinos that platform. Um, I see myself just like traveling back and forth for work. That's something I've always wanted to do. Just have a lot of bookings internationally. I love traveling and I love traveling for work. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, that's how I see. Hopefully, you know, a few few more awards. You know, maybe I don't know, like a BAFTA. You know? yeah. <laughs> if we can get Latinos, you know, into the UK market. Yeah, well, that would be great. That'd be, well, I mean, yeah. you know, you obviously just keep on pushing as you've been doing, and you know, I, I think there's there's obviously so far, you know, you've obviously been demonstrating that you've got got the talent you've got the ability so there's no reason why you can't progress and carry on achieving more so hopefully that that does materialize and you know you can achieve everything you're setting out for no oh, thank you hopefully just gotta keep keep working hard yeah that is the, the key working towards the goal yeah definitely so okay i also wanted to talk about talk to you about so your radio your radio show so the, that you, you you were just mentioning um, so talk to us about a bit more about it. Well, so at the moment, um, it's only like two months old. So mm -hmm. we started it two months ago. And it's focused, the name is Latin Heat, so it's all um, Latino things. And at the moment, every Sunday, we speak about a different country in Latin America. We talk about um, like tourism, travel, food, and a lot of history as well. And we also play all Latino music. And now for Hispanic Heritage Month, we've started having a lot of different guests as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a guest from like the country that we're talking about every Sunday. And yeah, so it's just really good. You know, we accept me um, like music submissions from Latino artists. We play on the radio, try to get as much exposure for everyone as we can. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Okay, so it's good that you, so you guys have got like a topical themes in every Sunday where you go about talking about history and like different areas of a country. So how? how yeah, and it's, it's all done in a yeah. Go on. No, no, go on. No, it's <laughs> no, yeah. I was just saying it's all done in a fun way as well. Like we wanted to um to make it different where because a lot of radio shows can be about like quite like about gossip or you know current affairs gossip wise as well celebrities and stuff we wanted to make it fit, like different just like educational but fun and yeah just yeah. all latino yeah okay no, that's good that mm -hmm. definitely is good um it's always it's more interesting i guess like that because you know there's so much things that you can talk about as well so so you never run out of yeah. material definitely yeah <laughs> thanks okay. so much good good all right then so I also wanted to talk to you about a bit more about um, sort of the decision making for you in you know pursuing that acting I guess uh, towards when you were <laughs> eighteen like so like you were like you were mentioning you know obviously you moved to the UK when you were um I'm, I think you said ten right when you were ten yeah yeah, yeah when I was okay. ten mm -hmm. so when you were ten 
And I wanted to also sort of ask you, how did you find that transition moving from from Venezuela to the UK? Sort of? Oh gosh, it yeah. was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible back then because. Um, I didn't speak the language, so I didn't speak English, and I remember it was all different, like everything was new, it was like, okay, different weather, different country, like different culture, different language, like everything was just different, so I did find it hard to adapt. I kind of picked up the language quite quickly because I came in um, in year six, so the level of English is not that... um, you know, that like articulate, for example. Yeah. So I picked it up like on a basic level really easy. But when I got to secondary school, it, yeah. it was hard because I did have a Spanish accent back then. Mm-hmm. There's that some kids would kind of like make fun of my accent and stuff. And then the culture difference was a thing as well because I, I remember I was walking with a friend once and she was like a close friend of mine. And you know that as Latinos, we can be like quite affectionate and touchy. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were walking, we were laughing, and I think I must have like just tapped her or like pushed her slightly as a joke because we were just laughing together. Yeah. And then she she did it back to me, yeah, but just a bit harder. And I was just like, okay. And then I did it harder and we literally got into a fight. Oh. And I remember I was just, yeah, yeah, I was just so upset because I was like, you know, like, you're my close friend. I wasn't trying to fight with you. This is just, like, us Latinos were very touchy. And literally, since then, like, I think back then, I definitely shut down a bit. I was like, yeah, like, I'm not going to be that affectionate with people anymore and stuff. Yeah. So that was the thing. And then the language barrier as well, because I remember going to a drama class after school once, because I like drama, obviously. Mm. And it was then when we were playing a game of, like, storytelling. And I just couldn't understand word by word what, some of the kids men and that's yeah. when I was like yeah forget accent like I can't even understand the language I am not doing this mm-hmm. so that's when I was just like I'm not doing it and then it got to when I was um yeah when I was 18 when I spoke to 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 Jeff and then I just decided to give it a push yeah okay I mean but obviously now you know you're you speak English very well you know you wouldn't sort yeah. of imagine that would be the case so how, how long did it take you? Do you feel that's what like everyone says? Confident enough, or sort of develop all your your language skills in English? How long did it take you, approximately? It definitely took a while because um, I think my accent now is quite like London neutral, for example. Yeah, yeah. But when when I got to acting school, it was more like. You could still hear a bit of Spanish and it was more like London, but very urban. Right. And it was, I think it definitely came down to my training as well, because in acting school, you get taught accents. So we were learning American accent, we were learning RP accent. And then, yes, I think just practicing that, practicing, practicing. Eventually, I just, I just got rid of my accent fully. But it took years. So if you think about it, I came here when I was 10 and I think I lost my accent fully when I was like 19. Right, okay. 20 yeah so before that you could hear her a bit now you know everyone thinks i was born here when i say no i came here when i was 10 they're just like what yeah. <laughs> they never believe it yeah yeah no no definitely i agree actually it's um yeah you can't notice it but but no that's good though i mean it's good obviously your training set you up as well for for you to yeah to develop more so so you get taught like accents as well like american accents as well yeah, act, you know what, acting school is really, really good. I would say it's not a necessity to get into the industry because I've seen it, you know, there's other ways. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely good because you learn about different accents, you know, you learn about different things in acting, a lot of methods, a lot of techniques. That I definitely learn a lot in acting school and you learn so much about yourself as well because in acting school they really try to break you, you know. Like they try to break you to the point to see how you pick yourself back up sort of thing. Right. Like, they're very harsh. Oh, my gosh. I remember one of my teachers. Um, I think he was very harsh for this because yeah. <laughs> my voice, yeah, so my voice wasn't how it was now. So I think it was, like, really, really urban back then and more nasal. And I remember I did it. We had to do an acting scene. And, the, and he was like, okay, act it as if it's going to be heard on the radio. So he meant that as, like, really focus on your voice, your articulation, you know, the word emphasis and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we done the scene, and then after he was like, "Oh, really good scene. 
And then he said to me, he was like, oh, but I would hate to listen to your voice in the radio. He was like, I would switch over the radio if I ever heard your voice in it. It is horrible. Right. And I remember I was just like, for years, I was just like, my voice is horrible. My voice is horrible. That's everything I've always thought. And it's just funny because now I'm doing a radio show. So it's just like, at the same time, you know, don't listen to everyone's opinion about you as well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. that was harsh. I wish yeah. you know. I hope I hope he he bumps into my or he comes across my radio <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, it's just an opinion, isn't it? So that is, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> he he wasn't the only one though. All the teachers would be like, "Your voice is horrible." And I'm just like, guys, you know, it's it's done. And my voice is nice now. I, I guess I hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you so you guys get like training on what how to use your voice properly then or how does that work like yeah because yeah it's really interesting there's so much like technical work to it because for example you have different um resonators so you know you've got you've got your chest you've right. got your nose you've got your head and that goes when like when people are singing as well i can't sing personally but mm -hmm. singing training goes a bit similar with that because you can have your chest voice speak you know um like for your chest or speak quite nasal um yeah so depending on how you use these resonators your voice will sound different right okay well I, yes I, it's I didn't interesting know that. I thought that your voice is the voice you grew up with and that's it <laughs> <laughs> no it is but you, you can train it that's how you know that's how you have um that theater actors theater actors wow they really have to train their voice very strong because they have to really project their voice and especially for theatre, you have to be able to do different tones as well. A mm. lot of different tones to show that emotion. In film and TV, the acting is more natural. It's just natural acting. But for theatre, yeah, like you have to go really big with your voice training. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, that sounds really interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do some, yeah. some, some reading on that myself, actually. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, do like vocal vocal training for actors, and you see all the the um, exercises they'll make you do. You'll be like, okay, <laughs> okay, cool, cool, interesting. Okay, so you also mentioned how in during uh, you know, when you were training, right in in acting school, how um, I guess your instructors or your teachers were sort of making a point yeah. out of trying to break you guys. <laughs> and try to sort of yeah. push you what would you say would be so we're going to do this so I'll ask you what would you say is, has been the most challenging experience you've had in acting school but then also what would you say has been one of the most challenging experiences that you've come across in the in your professional career so far mm -hmm. um do you know what with acting school I would say well, that was one of them, to be honest, because mm -hmm. like a lot of teachers would just always emphasize that. They were like, your voice sounds horrible. Your voice doesn't sound like this. You shouldn't speak like this. You're speaking too nasal. So it was, it was hard because I wasn't only... Um, at the end of the day, English is not my first language. So it's like I was already putting on an accent to speak in English. So it was it was hard. And it stayed with me for years, to be honest. For years, in my, I just believed, yeah, my voice sounds horrible. And I would always just try to change it. Like, I remember I even, I was doing like, I tried to do like some YouTube vlogs like years ago, just after acting school. And I remember I would always change my voice for it. And it wasn't until a friend said to me, like, but you don't sound like that. Like, why are you changing your voice for it? And it's just because that stayed with me. I was like, oh, because my voice is not nice. My voice doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. And um. Yeah, so that was a thing I had to kind of like get rid of or, you know, find like my own voice that's not putting on a voice, but that sounds okay for me, for example. Mm -hmm. And you know what? There was also a time there was a scene. <laughs> it was the same teacher, this guy. <laughs> we were doing a scene and I had to like imagine that I was playing with kids. So there was no kids there. And then in the scene, someone rings the bell. So I go from playing with the kids to go to answer the door. And for some reason, I just couldn't get it in time. Like I just couldn't get the acting bit properly. And I remember he, I was really good at, you know, playing with the imaginary kids. And he turned around and, said, and he was like, oh, um, well, you may never be a good actress, but you sure as hell will be a good mum. And I was just like, yeah. I found that. Like, how can you say that? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, the things they used to say to, to you, like, really used to break you down. That was just one of many, you know, those two things um, that got to me. And in my acting career, I'm really trying to think. 
Mm, I think just the most challenging for me is that it's a challenging part in itself. Like, mm. it's hard to make it. And I think just trying to get work, trying to, you know, book the auditions. And then, you know, sometimes before I used to do this, I used to, you know, wait for the show to come out or whatever to see who booked the job and then, like, compare myself. Like, oh, why didn't I get it? And it was really bad. It was like, oh, what's the word? Like, self-sabotaging. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I may not be, I'm not good enough. That's why I'm not booking the jobs and all this stuff. But I don't, I don't do that anymore. Or like, if you don't book it, it's just because it's not for you. It doesn't mean the other person's better than you. It means they're just more right for that specific role. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The same way for the jobs that I have booked, I was right for that role and someone else wasn't, you know? I'd say that's like the most challenging bit for me, just going to all these auditions and yeah, like sometimes just not booking the ones that you really want. Yeah. Okay. How, how do you do? Oh, uh, yeah. No, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, something just came back to me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I had this really weird experience actually mm -hmm. um so yeah this was something i came across during my career and um, modeling as well as acting mm -hmm. so i was booked for um for a job in brighton mm -hmm. it was for like a music video acting in it so i went to to brighton with the director and stuff and then you know everyone was staying in like a hotel and d separate rooms and stuff but then like the guy was really dodgy and yeah, then this sure. this job was actually booked through um for an agency like a big modern agency so I didn't think anything of it and um, I remember we went like for dinner just before like going back to the hotel sleeping and then you know shooting the next day and I remember he was just like um like basically trying to get me drunk oh, you know wow. and I remember I was quite young at the time yeah I was like 20 so that's when I just finished acting school so I wasn't really thinking much of it and luckily I'm a heavyweight so I wasn't getting like that drunk but then yeah then we went back to the hotel <laughs> and then um there was no crew this is the thing he was like yeah the crew are coming tomorrow so think about it. it's just me and the director obviously in different rooms but it's just us two in that moment in Brighton so it's really dodgy mm -hmm. and then um he must have um, invited me to his room and he was showing me something on the laptop like yeah so this is how the video is going to look tomorrow we'll start shooting tomorrow and then then he said to me, he's like, okay, well, we should practice for the video. So um, why don't you seduce me? Right. And I was just okay. like, yeah, it was really bad. I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, like, like just seduce me right now. Since you have to be like sexy in the video, why don't, why don't you practice that now? Listen, like, I left. Like, uh, I actually left. I don't care. It was, I think the pay for that shoot was like two grand or something, but I left. I said, you know what? I'm going to think about it. I'll be back. I literally went to my room, grabbed all my stuff and checked myself out. Yeah. I was like, I'm not saying this is so dodgy. Yeah. But yeah, so that's definitely like a dodgy and challenging experience for me. And I think, you know, all girls, all females pursuing a career in the industry should be wary of because yeah. wow. he's just one of many, you know? Yeah. Wow. No. Okay. No. So that actually is a, um... It's quite a interesting talking point in in the film industry because mm -hmm. you know, I feel like over the last two years we've seen a lot of cases. For example, even with that Harvey Weinstein uh, guy that he sort of used to have yeah, like a exactly. similar similar approach. So you know, for at least from your from mm -hmm. what you're saying, it seems that this isn't just something that goes on at the top top end. You know, of of the film industry, it happens sort yeah. of like at all levels. Um, exactly. Yeah. Well, I know that's very. No, that's yeah. No, he he was quite um quite known as well. Funny enough, he he was like a Spanish director, yeah. and um, he'd worked with oh, what's the actress's name? An English actress who's quite big. Like he'd done a big film, and she was in it. And I, that's what I found so shocking. I was just like, how can someone with your reputation that's worked with these sort of actors be doing this? But now, obviously, that was years ago. Now you can just see that it's just so common that it just happens everywhere. Right. Well, gosh, okay. No, I mean, yeah. thankfully everything worked out well and you, you know, you made your, you made your exit. Um, yeah, no, I made my, <laughs> yeah. I made my exit. I bought mission. Yeah, yeah. literally. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, something that I just, I would like to sort of ask is like based off that, right? How, how do you feel the experience is working in the film industry as a woman? Um, it 
can be quite scary. Like you can't feel um, quite vulnerable because, you know, after that experience, I just felt like, okay, I have to like, just be a bit more careful. The thing is, I didn't do anything out of the norm. I literally got booked on a job by a modeling agency and went and then I had that sort of experience. But it just made me more aware of what's out there, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And to just be more wary and yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it can be... <clears throat> I think, I mean, I think this isn't necessarily news, I guess, to, to a lot of people because I think, unfortunately, it seems like this is something that happens quite a lot. And like you said, it's not even because, like you said yourself, it's not like I did anything to sort of bring this on. You know? mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being booked for a job professionally, as you expect, and then this happens. So, so no, it's very unfortunate exactly. that you, you had to go through that. But like you said, it's, it's, it's experience as well. So now you... You've also always got that in the back of your mind to be, I guess, more careful. Exactly. Guess, in that sense, and you, you try to, mm-hmm. to, to, to sort of be more cautious. And also you can advise other people as well who are coming into the industry about things that they can be careful about as well. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And I remember even the, the agent from that modeling agency who I left in that very moment, he took sides with the client. And that's what I was really, I found so odd because... I remember emailing him when I was on the train on my way back and he was just like, what do you mean you've left the shoot? He's already made half the payment. And I was just like, hello, like, are you not <laughs> reading what I'm saying yeah. to you about what's happened? Like, yeah. he literally only cared about the money and was concerned that he had to give, you know, the client a refund. I was, I said to him, I said, you know what, you remove me from your books right now because the fact that you're taking sides with the client with something like this, it's just so odd, you know? Yeah, it's probably not the type of person you want representing you. To be honest. Work with, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, wow. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I think we've definitely covered the the challenging bits of the industry. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. What would you say though is, because like everything, there's always good and bad. But what would you say is one of the the the, the benefits, or I guess one of the best things that you enjoy about what you do? Um, do you know what you do <laughs> apart from people like that you do yeah. meet a lot of cool people yeah. and you do network you meet people that you know you have similar interests I just really really love acting like there's something I find so therapeutic about it like I really love you know just picking up a script getting in the zone and just getting lost in like the character's world and really like becoming that character when I'm on set, when I'm acting. I just really enjoy it. And yeah, there's just something I find really therapeutic about it. And it's just nice, you know, it's fun. Like when you do film projects and then you go to the premiere for it and then, you know, the film festivals, all that side of it is really fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. What would you say has been the highlight so far of your career? Um, I'd say... At the moment, well, the adverts I've done, I've done one in 2016, which was my favourite because I got to go to Lithuania for it for a few days. Okay. So it was fun, got to travel for it. Um, yeah, it was a big advert. It was like worldwide. So it was out in America. I was out in South America, in the UK. That was one highlight. Also um, winning an award for my short film Shadow. Mm-hmm. It, I won that in the Marbella International Film Festival for Best Newcomer. Right. So that was a highlight as well. And also right now working on trust because um, mm-hmm. it's going to, yeah, like the first one done really well. And I'm just so excited to film part two and three and for everyone to see it. We had like a massive red carpet premiere for it. And yeah, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So, yeah, at the moment, I'm really excited for that. And it's, yeah, it's one of my highlights right now that I'm living. Yeah. OK. No, that's really Sounds really good. I think, like you said, you know, despite some experiences which could be negative, I think overall, the from what you've explained, is the, the experience has been very positive and, you know, very inspiring. So congratulations to you. And mm-hmm. obviously, hopefully, you know, you, you're going to win many more awards and you start to secure more projects that, you know, more projects that you, that you enjoy as well. So that would be great. Um, uh, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. So, okay, so now that we're sort of entering the, the, the final portion of, of today's episode, um, so we sort of touched on, you know, what it's like, what it was like for you anyway, coming to the UK at a young age and trying to make that transition cultural-wise, learning the language and then, you know, 
going back to to your initial you know goal of becoming an actress what would you say to mm -hmm. like i said so the theme for this for this uh for this episode is hispanic heritage month and what would you say mm -hmm. is someone who's inspired you um and why? wow i have a lot of yeah i have a lot of idols mm -hmm. um or like favorite people so well, one of my favourite actresses is Charlize Theron. I just love her acting. And yeah, I've always loved her acting. The film she's in, she's very versatile. And she just shows that she can do any range of acting. But in terms of Latinas, oh, there's so many. There's um, Gina Rodriguez, who's in Jane the Virgin. Mm -hmm. Really like um, her acting, all the projects she's working on as well. Also, Diane Guerrero. Um, she's in a Marvel series right now. And uh, she's just killing it. And she's also an advocate for... Um, for kids that are, for families that are separated due to immigration in America. Mm -hmm. So she's written, because she experienced that herself, so she's written a book about that and she's really an advocate to raise awareness in that. So I really like what she's doing. And also Sophia, Sophia Vergara, because she, you know, like she made it so big yeah. at just being herself, you know, embracing her Latina personality, you know, her Spanish accent, everything, and she's made it so big. So she's definitely someone I look up to because she's really embraced like being Latina and yeah. got to where she is. Also, um, Eva Longoria. Um, I love Salma Hayek. She's such a good actress. Yeah. I love like all her films, and she's gorgeous as well. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, cool. That's definitely a good list. Okay, and. <laughs> All right, so finally, so what would you say, what, what advice would you give to a young Latino, Latina who's listening to you, who maybe wants to get into, into acting? What would be your, your golden piece of advice? Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I would say definitely um, you have to have thick skin, like, you know, be very strong-minded, believe in yourself and go in and go in with confidence like embrace being latina um i would say network with as many people as you can work on different projects create your own work because when you create your own work you create opportunities for example my film shadow that was an independent project we all made together and that you know that brought an award for me which opened other different doors but yeah, I would say definitely, um, you know, take up some classes. You don't have to go to acting school like three years or like one year full time how I, I did. But when you do classes, it helps you work on your craft and learn techniques and be better. And when you feel like you're better, then that will bring the confidence yeah. in you. And, you know, that will show when you're rehearsing or when you're in set. Like it really does show, you know, between different actors, like who's trained, who doesn't know what they're doing and stuff. Mm -hmm. and yeah also work in the beginning work on as many projects as you can even if they're not paid because at the end of the day you learn the most when you're on set so you can do classes but you know those things you learn in the class you have to apply when you're on set like you know you have to say you're serious and they're like okay um three two one action now you have to be really happy and stuff you have to know how to switch that on mm -hmm. and you don't learn that only like when you're on set that's when you really really learn that because it's long hours during the whole day and like I was saying before you have to keep that energy and you only learn how to do that by actually doing it yeah okay yeah. okay thank you thank you Andrea no that's definitely a great piece of advice and I'm sure it's going to serve a lot of our listeners who, who are interested in you know, going into acting you know because you've already experienced it you've gone through it and you know, you're you're making you're you're obviously making uh, moves in the industry, and you're you're progressing. So thank you, uh, thank you for that, Andrea. Okay, so we've come to we've oh, come to the end of thank today's you. episode, <laughs> and um, just want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for your time. It's been great talking to you. Great uh, to learn about yeah, your likewise. your story, your journey, and. Um, yeah, just seeing how, how everyone's progressing for you. I, I do wish you the very best, and I'm sure you're going to go far. Um, oh, that's so, so sweet. Thank so, you. So, yeah, so thank you for coming on, Andrea. Oh, thank you, Diego. Lovely to meet you, and thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if So, for the listeners, if they want to follow you, where can they do that? 
Um, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at I am Andrea Martinez. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, my radio show is at Latin Heat UK. If you want to follow that as well. And that goes live every Sunday evening, right? Yep, every Sunday, 7 to 9 p.m. on Tribe Urban Radio. Awesome. So you can listen through the app or for the website. Cool, cool, great. Okay, then. Thank you, Andrea. And thank you to everyone who's been listening. Um, until next time, that's all oh, from amazing. us. Thank mm-hmm. you. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you so much. Bye.